All right. Well, hello. This is my first time trying something a little different. Behold Blinky, my Eurorack modular synthesizer. I've got a box full of some extra modules, and I've not really been super happy with how everything is laid out and arranged on here. So I'm going to be taking it apart and rearranging where some of the modules are. Uh, I will apologize in advance because I got the camera up over here and I'm going to have to lean over a few times and I'll probably block the camera. Uh, not much I can do about that, but um, yeah, it, it is what it is. So main goals for this, um, I recently got a music thing modular radio music, which the only place I had space for it was in my little Intelligel palette case, uh, Blinky Jr., my little party in a backpack. It doesn't really suit what I want to do with the super portable module, so it's coming out of here and is going to go in my large IntelliGel performance case because um, I think it's going to play really nicely with rings and clouds uh, and Mimeophon, uh, all of which are up in here. They're sort of staples of how I like to play my synthesizer. And to make room for that, we're going to have to pull a couple of things out because, as you can tell, this case is absolutely packed with stuff right now. The other thing we're going to do, just to make some room, uh, we're going to pull out the Dupfer A124 Wasp filter. Fantastic multi-mode filter. Uh, got a really growly, gnarly sound when you crank up the resonance. Um, but it's a little bit big, and I've got the Dupfer A121 III. That's a little tiny 4 HP multi-mode filter. Um, doesn't sound quite as interesting and characterful as the Wasp. But it's actually a little bit too tall to fit in the IntelliGel palette cases. Uh, I've actually had to bend the legs on the PCB a little. So we're going to pull that out. Uh, we're going to put that over here. The Wasp may find a home in my sort of extra utility case up here. And we're also going to be pulling out the Dixie 2, which really pains me because this is a fantastic analog oscillator. Um, but there's just not quite enough room for it and everything else I want. Um, so we're going to be pulling out Dixie and the Wasp filter and replacing the two of them with the Dupfer A1116, uh, the miniature synthesizer voice. It's got a built-in filter, got a built-in envelope generator. Um, it, it does a lot of what I tend to use Dixie for. It's missing this, oh, it's not missing the sub-octave. It doesn't have a separate output for the sub-octave generator, but it's got its own mixer and a sub-octave, so I've got everything sort of planned out on modular grid. We'll see how it goes. Uh, and then the other big thing that we're going to be changing, uh, we're going to be pulling IntelliGel Plog, which is an absolutely fantastic logic module. Right now, it's just sort of sitting unused in my extra utility case. We're actually going to be fitting it down here between two of the Turing machine expanders because having the Turing machine's uh, random looped random gate outputs right beside plug is going to unlock a lot of interesting rhythmic things i think so we're going to play around with that uh see where we go depending on how long this video winds up being uh i may also rearrange some things up on this top one u row uh, pull out the fsr and put in my old intelligel digi tank uh, just a digital spring reverb tank um I've already got Mimifon and Cloud, so we've got a lot of effects in here already, but having one that I can dedicate for use with radio music um, might be fun. We'll see how that goes. So without further ado, let's start playing with the screwdriver and pulling some modules out. Uh, one tip I will give anyone who is building Eurorack or already has Eurorack and is looking to expand it a little bit, Pick a standardized type of screw. Use that everywhere in your case. Uh, I've got two and a half millimeter hex head screws. Um, no real reason why I use those over Phillips other than they tend to lock onto the screwdriver a little bit better. Phillips heads work fine. Um, I know a lot of people like Nurleys or thumb screws. Um, I find thumb screws tend to stick up a little bit too far and I don't like how they stick up. But if that's your thing, uh, absolutely go for that. And let's, can we, no, I think we're going to have to loosen 
my VCO1U just to be able to get at the power bus in this case to unplug things. And I will try having the chat open on my phone here. I don't think we've probably got anyone watching. But, you know, just in case anyone does show up, uh, feel free to say hi. I'll try to respond to you in the chat. And do let me know if the levels are all over the place. I did my best to sort of troubleshoot the audio ahead of time, but things happen. I may bump the mic, you know. All right, there is my 4HP multi-mode filter. I don't know how well this will show up on camera, but you can see I've actually had to cant the PCB because it's just attached with this little row of header pins right here. I've actually had to bend it over diagonally slightly to get it to just barely fit inside the performance case, which that doesn't feel real great needing to bend a circuit board to make it fit in the case. So we're just not going to use it in here. Uh, instead, we're going to be putting in possibly one of the most bog-standard, uninteresting filters in the world, the Intelligel UVCF, Mu VCF, Micro VCF, however you want to pronounce that. Um, it's a little bit wider. It's a 6 HP instead of only 4, but it's your classic multi-mode 12 dB filter. Nothing too exciting about that. And then that'll leave us with 2 HP to spare in this little case haven't totally decided what i want to fill that with we've got a few options um, leading candidates we've got the 2hp tune a uh, little tiny quantizer um, the gyro pi module over on the far left don't know if that's quite in frame uh, gyro pi can operate as a quantizer uh, it also operates as a sort of miniature version of pamela's workout uh, Absolutely fantastic open source module. I really like it. I'm a big supporter of the software. I've written a lot of the software for it. But needing to always use one channel of that until I got six outputs for quantizing duties when I've got a 2HP quantizer, might go that route. The other option is I've got the Beep Boop Electronics 2HP wide passive low pass gate. Um, don't know if we need a low-pass gate and a multi-mode filter, but the fact that it's passive means wiring it in, it's going to be easy. It's basically a blank with some functionality. Um, can do a passive mult, but we've got the mult row up here, uh, so I don't think that's going to be necessary. All right, but we've got our radio music and our multi-mode filter out, so let's keep going unscrewing things. Pull up the wasp. One thing I've never really been a fan of with Dupfer filters or Dupfer modules in general, they always have single holes for the screws. They don't give you nice wide slots. So positioning them is always a little bit of a challenge. I need to get this module out of the way so I can actually get it where the wasp filter is plugged in. And there we go. Just unplug the wasp filter, which, again, in depth for fashion, is a really tall module. Um, and I, I love this filter. It's great. It's probably going to wind up in my upper case, sort of as a. I use this 104 performance case as sort of the the extra utilities for when I'm playing around here at home. Um, but I want to keep my little 64 HP case and the big performance case as usable as standalone instruments. So I can just either throw them in a backpack or put the lid on, carry it around like a suitcase and have an all in one instrument that I can just pick up and play with. And I'm going to put the up for four HP filter over here. Plug that in. We're not going to screw it in yet because we are going to be rearranging a lot of things in this case. Get in there. Also, another tip for anyone buying these Intelligel cases. 
yes, they do have the built-in power supplies and lots of headers for connecting power, but especially the 64 HP case, if you're really cramming it with lots of two and four HP modules, uh, I actually ran out of space on the power header when I first got this. So it's worth investing in a couple flag bus cables. Um, and that gives you a few more options to reroute the power. Um, the power in both of the performance cases is mounted along the top row or the, the top edge of the case, which means you really have to fish around in there to plug things in. Um, having a flying bus cable makes accessing the power connections just a lot easier and a lot cleaner. And I know someone is going to say it either in the YouTube comments when this winds up on there, if it does, uh, or in the chat if anyone ever joins us, that I should probably have some ESD protection while doing this. And you are absolutely right. Um, I don't have a grounding strap at home, unfortunately. So we're just being careful and I'm not wearing wool socks or anything. So, And I'm doing my best not to wheel my chair around. So that's plug and we're going to fit plug in over here between the pulses expander and the wrong from oh i can't remember what company makes this like it's from thonk i don't remember the manufacturer but it's a variation on the vactrol mixer for the turing machine uh, it's a lot of fun um, for doing stereo ping pong effects and that sort of thing and pull out our oh now I'm second guessing myself can we can we leave the Dixie instead of the A1116 there's a reason I figured out that I had I couldn't it has something to do with the other modules I was removing to make room for things but curses I don't remember what that reason was anymore in any case, we do need to pull Dixie out of here to make room because we're moving my black noise modules, the uh, dual rectifier, the voltage processor, and the slew LFO. We're going to move all three of these down to the bottom row uh, to make room for plug. And I'm also going to be moving over scales and the Penrose quantizer. Um, could arguably get away with just one quantizer in this large case. But because I'm either going to have the Dixie or the A1116, plus we've got plats, plus we've got rings, plus we've got clouds, uh, all of which can benefit from quantizing. I like having the two channels on scales plus the Penrose, which I can use on a slightly different scale. Uh, you can do fun things like having, you know, a full chromatic scale on one and just, you know, one, three, five chords on the other. And then just to explain a little bit more about the case while we're sitting here staring at it and my hands, I play with a screwdriver. Uh, we've got the complete quad set of proc drums, bass drum, snare drum, hand clap, and hi-hat. Uh, these are all from Thok and are architecturally exactly the same as radio music, uh, just different firmware. They're really fantastic little drum, well, pretty big drums, but because they're not sampled, they're actually generative. Um, they, they sound really interesting. You can put some slow moving LFOs into them to make them sound interesting. Uh, I actually use one channel of the LL8-2 sequencer uh, to open and close the hi-hat. So it's all nicely clocked together. Um, you can also use an LFO or two to open and close a hi-hat if you just want some randomness. All right, the quantizer's out. Let's see, I am making a right mess of my desk, but that's part of the fun. And unfortunately, in the effort to make room, we're actually going to lose 
my ADAC system's dual sample and hold. Um, hurts a little bit losing that from this case. I might, in the end, I might leave this in and pull the voltage processor out just because having an extra noise source and sample and hold, track and hold, slew uh, is really nice in a case. So. And you can see here, probably not going to show up really well, but I've got a flying bus cable in here connected to power supply. Um, in the, the larger IntelliGel performance cases, the power supply is mounted on the bottom half of the case. Um, so it eats up some of the vertical space. Um, so I've got a couple of flying bus cables hang out in the top to provide easy power for the one euro on the top and powering modules up along there. Black noise, dual rectifier. That's also plugged into. Oh, that. All right, we're gonna have to pull a few things out before we can unplug that. The dual rectifier and voltage processor are. So it's just a really nice combination for control voltage manipulation. The voltage processor gives you all sorts of you know, scaling, curve manipulation offset voltages. Um, it's, a, it's a really nice utility module and the dual rectifier gives you the ability to invert or half invert or rectify half rectify um, incoming audio or CV signals. So if you've got a through zero LFO and you want to clip it to zero you can do that. If you want to just invert it have it all above zero but mirrored you can do that with it. It's it's a really nice little rectifier. And, uh, oh dear, where do you plug in? Oh, there we go. So, all of this is in that flying bus cable I was talking about. So here we go. So we got tucked out of the way. And rectifier. There we go. Yeah, and this is what I was talking about with those flying bus cables. Um, that's just plugged in right here to provide some power for five modules in the top half of the case. Oh, come on. Let's get in there. Ribbon cables never cooperate, do they? No matter what you do, they're always in the way somewhere. And loosen some things, make some room. Dub for quad LFO, another one of my favorite utilities. Um, as Mylar Melody has said in one of his videos, you can never have too many LFOs. Um, so this is just a really nice, convenient quad LFO. Uh, it only does triangle or square waves through zero. So again, that's why I like having that dual rectifier from Black Noise. It just increases the possibilities with those LFOs. Um, but having four free running LFOs in 4HP, um, it's really compact. I've heard some people complain that it's noisy or causes some interference with nearby modules. I've never personally experienced that, but if you're careful about where you put it in your case so it's not right beside anything really sensitive you should be able to mitigate that you know maybe don't put it right beside a quantizer but if it's next to some sample holds or something you should be okay and we've got another flying bus cable here that is actually what's oh right yes this flying bus cable is actually expanding the expanders for the turing machine um just making it easier to pass things through. So this we cannot use to power any modules, but it's plugged into the Turing machine directly. So let's get a 
Oh, <laughs> the other thing we were gonna do to make room. I've got the PEXP1 module for Pamela's workout. Unfortunately, we need to save the 4 HP that it's using. So it's gonna come out. Do we lift that? No, we're gonna have to pull Pam's workout. So this is Pamela's new workout. Uh, the, not in production anymore, but it's spiritually the same as Pamela's pro workout, which just came out relatively recently. Absolutely fantastic master clock module. Um, you can also use it for generating clocked LFOs. It'll quantize as well. I don't know if it's just me, but I love having quantizers. Um, some people say you never have enough or too many LFOs, too many VCAs. You definitely can have enough quantizers, but I like having them in a lot of places. Um, having independent quantizers for different modules is just really convenient. And we're going to leave this dub for passive malt right beside Pam's uh, just so we can send clock signals around more easily. That's one thing with the amount of stuff I'm packing into this case. There's just unfortunately not enough room for a lot of malts. So I tend to use a lot of stack cables in this case if I need them. Not ideal, but it works. And then we've got one passive malt for routing clock signals. Occasionally, I do swap out the LL8 II with Euclidean circles, or originally I had Steppy down here, which is half as many channels, but also half the width. So that opens up some more room for either some more passive malts or even active malts, but I don't own any of those. Um, I tend to find I don't actually need to malt signals all that often. Um, they're useful, but tend to use them not as often as maybe I should. And just because we're in this corner of the case, let's talk about this other one, the Duffer A138N. Uh, it's their slimline quad channel mono mixer. Uh, no mutes on it, which is, I mean, that's fine. It's for something that narrow that's just a mixer. That's great. Um, I use it to mix the drum level. So I've got a single output for all of my drums that I can send over here into one of my IntelliJ scales mixers, which are my master outputs. I like having one channel dedicated to all the drums. I just dropped a screw. I knew that was going to happen. Oh dear. I was worried about this. Pull all the rest of the screws out so we don't drop those and where did you go screw Aha. the last thing you want is something conductive flying around all of your electronics okay so let's if we dry fit things make sure we've actually got enough room for everything and we've got that flying bus cable up here that we can power our plug with. Just plug that in right here. Get that behind. Yeah. Yeah, so we've shuffled everything over a little bit by pulling out the PAMS expander. And now we've got some nice CV controllable logic right beside all of our gates. Um, this PAMS is going to be generating gates. LA2 is going to be generating gates. We've got pulses, which is also making gates. All of that we can send into the two plug channels for some interesting logic. That'll plug in either right here for triggering drums, or we can send it over to, and it's a little bit of a longer stretch with the wires, but we've got our Duffer dual ADSR envelope generator, uh, or we've got a quad VCA we can do stuff with. This is also a mixer if we need. Yeah, I, I think this will work. So then we've got, let's drive it with some stuff. Uh, 
slew LFO hanging around near all of our gates is going to be really nice because it this uh, the black noise slew LFO is a great module for doing sidechain compression, especially with the kick drum. Uh, this we're having a malt somewhere in the vicinity of all this would be nice because I could send one copy of the bass drum into um, either the voltage processor or the slew LFO to do some sidechain compression, the other one or the other copy into the mixer to go out to the dry. That's not the worst, but let's see how we can fit things together. There is my You lost it. No, no, that is what we wanted. Looked like a mult, but no, that's the dual rectifier. Which we're actually gonna stick. Let's put the dual rectifier there, and that way we've got a little bit of a buffer between the squishy knobs of the voltage processor and the equally squishy knobs of the mixer. And then we've got the slew LFO. So these are not the standard knobs for the black noise voltage processor. Um, these, I got these knobs from Thonk. Um, they're a little bit bigger. The original knobs were, I found them really slick and hard to actually get a grip on. These ones are larger diameter, but they've got knurled grips on the side, so they're easier to grab. But the downside is that it is really hard to get your fingers in there without bumping anything. Fortunately, this module is mostly a set it and forget it module for me. I don't tend to need to tweak anything on the fly. Plus, I usually have a big bundle of wires going right over this section from either the drum mixer or gate signals routing over here. Um, so putting that down here is not going to be too big a problem. And we've got our filters. And what we want are a pair of quantizers. Um, and just to make dry fitting things easier, I'm actually going to pull off the power cables just so we can dry fit things a little nicer. So that's. Uh, you're gonna be in trouble. And we've got just enough room for the Penrose quantizer which I like mounting upside down beside scales just so the keyboards are oriented the same way. Got all the quantized outputs on the top row, which go into my uh, VCOs just above. And so we've got... What do we want? Radio music. The whole reason we're doing all this. We're going to go right there. Quad LFOs can probably hang out beside the wrong mixer. Actually, we could, we've got enough room. We could even swap those two around. Have keep the wrong Vactrol mixer closer to the VCOs, which are what are going to be feeding into it. Fortunately, it does have to be connected behind the scenes to the Turing machine, so there's a limit how far we can go. But Putting our LFOs beside plug, again, nothing wrong with that. Plus we've got access easy to all the drums to modulate them. It's a little bit of a stretch to get them over to the filters or the ADSR, but that's, that's not too bad a distance, honestly. And what else do we have here? We're gonna... We could, we could put the Dixie back in over here and that actually seems to leave me with 2 HP to spare I don't hate that but is there what do I want to fill that 2 HP with because I'm one of those obsessive people if I've got HP left over it feels like a waste I've got all pardon me I've got a box down here with some extra modules that I'm 
I pulled out. Woo oh, I'm sorry. I cut the tripod on the leg of my chair. So I think I thought I forgot what it was. Sorry about that. Uh, what do we have in the box of extra modules? Uh, we've got the Seb Songs Odds, which I bought this module thinking that I could use it as sort of a narrow, pre-quantized Turing machine. I'm a huge fan of the Turing machine. Uh, Mylar Melodies has sold me on that one. I've got two of them, one in my little case, another one up here. Technically, EuroPie can also act as a Turing machine, but I usually use it as a PAMS clone. Um, I'll leave a link to the EuroPie GitHub repository um, in case you want to check that module out. It's fantastic. Unfortunately, I just didn't really like the way odds locks and unlocks itself. And I kept having to go back to the manual to check what, you know, you've got a scale and a chord option, but it, it's unlabeled, so you just have to remember what order things are in. The 2HP tune that I'm going to be putting in here does the same thing, which isn't ideal, but it's okay. Uh, I've got another passive malt. I might put that in, up in here, actually, because that's... That is potentially going to be really useful. Uh, we've got the Music Thing Modular London Drive. Uh, I've got the Twin Drive and Mini Drive up here already. Um, this one previously lived in my, mini, in my mini case. I just didn't use it in there that much. I got it on the Thonk sale over the summer. Um, it's a nice module. I just, I think I prefer the Twin Drive and the, the Mini Drive to the London Drive. Nothing wrong with it, it's just I prefer the other two. Uh, we've got the Frequency Central Wave Runner, which is a nice module, but again, it's very deep. It doesn't fit in the performance cases at all. Um, it, it bottoms out with about two PCB thicknesses worth of space between the screw holes and the actual rails for mounting. Um, it's a nice clockable LFO, but I just, it doesn't fit in the cases where I want it, and I've figured out how to do other things with it. So eventually I may drop it back in my large case. If I get another large case, it'll probably find a home in there. Uh, another flying bus cable. You can never have too many of those when you're putting cases together. Uh, we've got, I've actually got another, oh no, this is the, the micro USB uh, expander. Uh, it comes with both the three eight, or the three U and the one U panels. I've got the one U version sitting in my miniature case right now, so this is just two three point passive uh, malts right now. But it, it's a nice one to have in case I shuffle things around in here again. And we've got the Division Six Mini Sequencer. Um, I bought this one thinking I could maybe use it as a, a miniature Mother 32, sort of that all-in-one all single oscillator sequencer. And on paper, yeah, I could. I just didn't really enjoy the way it sounded. Um, it's a little bit... I don't want to say lo-fi because that has a certain sound to it, but it's got a primitive digital sound to it that just wasn't what I was really looking for. Um, I'm sure I could use it again in something, and I, I may build a, a small pallet case around it one day. But for now, that just sort of lives in my box of unused modules. And yeah, I think that's about it for other things in here, other than you know some expanders for other modules. Uh, what are you? Oh, you're another, another passive duff for Malt. Uh, and a perf board blank just in case you need a blank for something. Um, I don't remember what thonk kit that came with. So, how's this? Is this actually what I want? Let me, let me pull up modular grid because I did actually plan out all this case and something is a little different from what I originally planned. But that's not necessarily a bad thing, because I, I think we can work with this. So, what do we have? What is different? Oh no, I've accidentally grabbed the module and moved it around while scrolling. 
Okay. So, on the original spec, we had... Yeah, instead of Dixie and a bit of a hole, we had the 111.6. Are you actually... I guess that is the width of Dixie in a hole, so... Yeah, well, I guess that's an interesting question, is do we want... Do we want to stick with Dixie? That's... Yeah, I'm... A typical YouTuber Twitch. Tell me in the comments, uh, what's your favorite analog oscillator? Um, I mean, Dixie 2 is probably one of the most popular analog oscillators on the modular grid for a very good reason. It's got a lot of nice wave shapes. It's got PWM. It's got a sub oscillator or sub octave square wave. Um, it's got syncing. It's got FM. It, it is really nice. The 111.6, it's got PWM. It's got not as many wave shapes, but you can blend between square and saw square and triangle or just a square with PWM control. It's got a sub octave, but it's not a separate output. It's only available through the mixer internally. Um, it's got its own envelope generator, which is really nice, but I've got a VCA and an envelope generator right here, so we can mimic that. It's even a duff for envelope generator, um, but with fully independent ADS and R modes instead of a switch and then either the decay and release are slave to the same knob or just an ad or an ar and there's less cv control so and it's got a filter built into it but we've got our 12 db multi-mode filter and we've got the god's box 24 db low pass filter uh, which is just really nice and growly sounding so i think the only thing to really consider is whether we want sample and hold with a noise output and a little bit more sort of interesting logic manipulations because we've got average difference in some outputs on the dual sample and hold or do we want the voltage processor to be doing some cv manipulation they're both exactly the same footprint so and once we put it all together, I can swap one out for the other one. Or we could pull the Penrose quantizer and put the sample and hold there. So we've got a lot of options. So for now, let's just put this together the way we've got it with an extra malt somewhere. Can we slide these over enough to... F oh, I think... I think we might just be able to get one more passive uh, do we want the passive malt or do we want the low pass gate that's interesting i feel like the lack of malts is the bigger problem we've got we've got filters i don't think the low pass gate is going to be doing anything terribly dramatic and again it's a it's no power 2 hp so that'll be super easy to swap out if we do want to so let's get can squeeze this malt between plug and my LFOs that'll give me some more routing options for those sort of control signals um, I generally don't like using passive malts for any quantized signals um, but it's close enough to my VC to my uh, VCOs that I can get signal in there if I want to split signal out between dry and wet in the mix I think that'll work so now we just need to make sure everything is plugged in and some of these nuts and the jacks are coming loose. should go through all of those. Um, so let's start by we'll just pull things out and leave them in the order we want to connect them, wire up power. You are plugged in. You are plugged in. So two of you can just hang out on the side there. Yeah. Okay. Well, these are going to be a 
little more awkward. Let's get laid down on top. You are connected. You are connected. So it's really just plug. Oh, plug is connected. Okay, so we can start screwing down this top row. And I'm mildly obsessive, just like minimizing the gaps between modules. So I always press them over a little bit when I'm screwing them in. We'll leave a few of the screws out just in case we need to rearrange anything. Hopefully you're enjoying some of the background music and it's not too loud. Um, I'll double check the mix before I put this on YouTube if the audio is absolute garbage. Um, then this live stream may be the only opportunity to see it all. None of my viewers, but that's okay. We've had fun. Just kick me in the butt to at least figure out about how I want to be able to stream things. Yeah, stick the passive mult right here. And it's even IntelliGel, so it you know, brand-wise, it works out quite nicely. Not that I really care about grouping modules by the same manufacturer together, but yeah, it makes a little difference sometimes. I mean, it doesn't actually make any difference at all, but it's satisfying when the panels are, you know, if you get all the black panels together and all the white panels together, it's, it is a little gratifying when things line up and look aesthetically pleasing. Okay, and we've got that. This is the flying bus cable that is connected to the power supply, not the Turing machine expander. So we're going to plug Dixie and radio music in. And we're going to use the fly end of that. And we've still got one more connection so if we do want a, an active module somewhere up here later we've got space for it unfortunately neither of these modules are very deep so we've got room to sort of force that bus cable down in there and let's get dixie the right way around without twisting the cable too much oh come on Just, what are you bus cable was sitting on its side and there we go that is the top row all dry fit in place let's just get a screw in each of those to hold them in place and then we can move on to the bottom row I think we'll see how I get without redoing that top row um, the only thing and it's a, going to be a trade-off between everything goes is a trade-off, but in this case, it's going to be a trade-off between having my little powered USB output that I use for this dirt cheap little lamp that I got on Amazon. Yep, come on. Plugs in there. It's a nice little work light on top of the case so I can see things in the dark. Um, super convenient, actually. Um, so I've got that plus the IntelliGel 1UFSR. Um, it's just a nice little passive button for manually triggering things. Um, it's right beside the pointers. That's a two point sequential switch. I've got a larger two, three or four channel sequential switch up here from Dupfer. Um, both are nice. It'd be nice to have the larger sequential switch in the big case, but I don't think there's enough room for it. I'm not without sacrificing some other functionality that I'm not sure I really want to do. So we've got our IntelliGel scales, which is honestly, I think this is probably my favorite quantizer. Yes, I own too many quantizers. We went over that, uh, but this one is absolutely fantastic for the size You've got two channels it can act as a sequencer it's it's just really nice um the red stripe on that 
side of the Penrose. The Penrose Quantizer um, I actually bought first uh, because Scales was horribly out of stock for those of you who remember trying to buy anything over the last few years uh, with semiconductors. You know what I'm talking about. Um, so this is actually my, I guess the second quantizer. The first one I bought was the Dupfer A156. Um, it's a really nice dual quantizer, but it's locked into either doing major minor chromatic, um, either full scale 1.5 or 1.3.5 with an optional plus six or plus seven. Um, that sounds very complicated. Um, trust me, music majors, I think I got everything there right. Um, it is a really nice dual band quantizer. Um, there's a jumper on the back that you can either set both channels to be chromatic major or minor, uh, or you can leave one channel chromatic all the time and then the other one is configurable. There's a jumper on the back to change that. So it is, it's a really nice minimal brain power required quantizer. Um, the pen rows and the scales, because they're both keyboard based and you're turning notes individually on and off, um, it's a little bit more brain power if you want to you know, change from major to minor on the fly. You're you know, hitting a bunch of buttons simultaneously to change your scale. Uh, with the dub for it's just like a switch between major and minor, you're done. So performance wise, if you need to think about things, it, it is easier to manage, but I, I like the flexibility of the keyboards because you can do whole tone scales, you can do some, in, you can do blue scales, you can do all sorts of fun things. Um, they just require a little bit more of a musical background or musical training, which in my case, you know, high school band class was a long time ago, but I still remember it and thankfully I have two very close family members who are music majors um, and by majors I mean like they actually have master's degrees in music so I can talk to them about music stuff um, my brother-in-law was the drummer in a band so I can talk to him about you know, interesting rhythmic stuff um, and he's familiar with Euclidean rhythms despite never actually knowing what they are mathematically which is that's sort of an interesting conversation um maybe if i do more of these streams i can have some guest speakers we can actually talk about things and turn this into some sort of a podcast wouldn't that be very peak pandemic <laughs> anyway um, i think we're just about done with this case for now and I uh, like you're gonna be. Yeah. Yeah, so, because this module is so tall and we're working right above the power supply, it's gonna be a touch tricky getting it in there without disrupting everything. But we should be able to. may need to swap which side each filter is for the other, but that's... Apologies, I just whacked the mic with my elbow. I'm gonna... Catch it. Yeah, I think that'll work. And then we've got the God's Box filter, which should fit in right... You know what, let's, let's actually start on the other side. Cool. We've got more room to put those around cables. And let's actually swap where these two cables actually go. Okay. So let's get the God's Box filters screwed in. So the God's Box filter, um, if you need a 24 dB low pass filter, this one sounds fantastic. Um, it's a pretty easy build from Thonk. <laughs> I've got a lot of modules from Thonk. I'm, I like the DIY aspect of 
building your instrument completely from scratch and even if it's from kits that someone else has put together for you but it's it's a lot of fun gingerly straighten out the bend I put in this to make it fit in my other case. Actually, if we yeah, let me scale this and plug it in on the far side, that'll give us just a touch more room for this. I think we should be able to slide it in. Oh, perfect. Fits in just between the power headers modules all right that's better now we've got more swapping around power supplies so that they're not crisscrossing inside the case at least not crisscrossing as much. Show you up to the top and get the Pandora's quantizer in the side. Yeah, that looks good. It can be real sad if we turn the case on and find out that uh, we've missed something or there's something that doesn't power on that's always my biggest fear when whenever I do any of this is finding out that something is not plugged in or you know you bump it and you hear the rattling of a loose screw inside that is the biggest sinking feeling is fishing loose screws out and then figuring out where they fell out of and if it's an important screw or just a Oh yeah, I can leave that out. It won't hurt anything. Screw. Actually, I recently came back from a vacation to visit my family over Canadian Thanksgiving. And I got home and pulled my little IntelliGel pallet case out of my luggage. And I heard that dreaded rattling of a screw inside. Um, turns out that this one of the screws that holds together the Erica Synth's Pico drum modules, one of those screws had just completely fallen out of the case or fallen out of the module and was rattling around inside um, no idea how that managed to back itself out when it's you know i guess just the bumping and banging of going through air airport security with a synthesizer in your carry-on luggage that was frustrating to figure out and easy to fish the screw out because the pallet cases are mostly empty inside but figuring out what module this random screw came out of. I think I pulled half the case apart looking at each one figuring it out before I finally... Oh! There it is. Of course it's a 2 mil hex screw not a 2.5 so I had to fish out my other screwdriver. But yeah, It still works. Okay, there we go. Everything is held in with at least one screw. So let's Turn it on and make sure everything lights up. Yeah. That looks like a good sign. We've got... Yep. Yep. Everything looks good. I think we can finish locking everything down. dropping screws inside pallet cases. I just did exactly that. Come on. Oh, I saw it. Haha, <laughs> bad screw. Did the radio music turn off? Yeah, there's a light on there. Rest of the screws.
really looking forward to playing around with Plog again. Uh, with it sitting in the other case, I just haven't used it much because I've been working on things that only use the, the large performance case. Um, there's an open mic night um, not too long ago that I wound up not being able to perform at, but I was sort of figuring out a patch and practicing with something I could just pick up the one case and go because I don't want to spend a lot of time setting up and then tearing down and you know, taking more gear than you can easily keep an eye on at an open night mic night in a bar that just feels like a recipe for spilling a beer or something um, so i haven't used plog all that much i managed to get i think the last of the old new stock um there was one on long and mcquade's website that got shipped from a store in Vancouver, I think. I live in southern Ontario right now. Um, but it's it's just a really fun logic module because you've, you've got CV control over the logic operator. So it's not like... And some multi-logic operator modules, you've got dedicated inputs for ands, ors, xors. Um, or you've got switches you need to flip to change modes with this one you can cycle through the mode with a button but you've also got cv control over it which i think could lead to some really interesting um, experimentation um, i'll probably do some of that on a live stream later on um, maybe later this week if i'm feeling inspired um, just coming back from a vacation for a week um, getting back into the swing of things at work. Uh, haven't had a lot of brain power for playing around with synthesizers much, plus I wanted to get all of this surgery done. So we'll we'll see what happens. Um, yeah, either you know, watch my Twitch channel if I'm doing a live stream, or I may just pre-record something and upload it directly to YouTube. Um, and if you're watching this on YouTube, um, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, all those usual things. Uh, I'm a terrible youtuber this is why i do this so infrequently but seriously uh anyone who does wind up watching this ever um yeah leave a comment if you liked it you didn't like it if i ramble too much if i ramble not enough boy can i ramble my brother and i went on for two days at my parents cottage talking about the topology of food which is a discussion that i'm not even going to going to get to right now. Um, suffice it to say that a salad is definable as a zero sandwich, and a club sandwich is a three sandwich, and a standard sandwich is a two sandwich, and a pizza or a burrito are both one sandwiches. I think that is all the screws for this case. Nice. All right, well, so we've got that done. Let's move on to just getting the holes plugged in my little pallet case and then we'll call it a day i'll finish filling in this big hole we've introduced in the the 104 performance case later uh, so we wanted two hp tune and the intelligel uvcf so where do we actually want to put this we've got Oops, they just dropped up the electronics on the desk. That's totally safe, right? Yeah. Okay. I think we want tune to be on this side of Beehive. And Beehive being uh, after later audio's micro plats. I guess it's technically mini plats because they do make an even smaller one. Uh, completely compatible with the original Mutable Instruments Platts firmware. I've even got the, the latest one that adds those orange modes. Um, it, it's absolutely fantastic digital oscillator. There's a reason everyone loves Platts. I find the original Platts to be just a little bit too big, so I, I actually prefer the, the Beehive format because it, it's big enough that these knobs are still nice and grippy. There's enough room to get your fingers in there. But it doesn't take up quite the same amount of horizontal real estate as full-size plats. Uh, and conveniently, the 
and rings nano rings um, from after later audio is exactly the same width so it's a one-to-one -one drop in if i want to replace plats with rings um, or I, I could put in a an analog oscillator or anything else that's 8 hp wide um, that's one thing that i don't have in this case is a really nice analog oscillator i've got intelligel's vco1u which is not it's not a bad oscillator but i tend to use it as an lfo more than an actual oscillator um it's not bad it's just not not quite as nice The track you're actually listening to right now in the background was recorded entirely on this little case, um, primarily using Beehive in the new orange arpeggiator mode, um, being sequenced from Pam's workout, or, well, Pam's workout script for EuroPi into Turing Machine, back into EuroPi as a quantizer with a minor scale, and then into the arpeggiator. I would, that's a trick I really like doing with uh, with plats in that mode is using the arpeggiator as something to break up or augment an external quantized sequence. It's maybe I'll do a whole video about that sometime because it is describing it like that sounds a lot more complicated than it really is. But this step of the operation is why I kind of don't like the IntelliGel performance cases because the power strip is literally mounted vertically on the top inside wall behind the utility 1U row. So it means the inside of the case is virtually featureless. So there's tons of room for routing ribbon cables and everything inside. And there's no you know, back plate that where you lose any vertical space. But plugging things in is just, you're always banging your knuckles on the inside edges. It's not, it's not a comfortable user experience. And that's why I made that recommendation to have extra flying bus cables. So you can just have one cable up there and then you bring you know, five or 10 power jacks down into the lower half of the case where they're actually reachable by humans with fingers that bend like human fingers are supposed to. Come on. Yeah. See it? Aha, there we go. There's, you're plugged in now. And you're upside down. Anyway, back to what I was saying before about uh, oscillators. When I first put together the small performance, or the small pallet case as a sort of standalone party in a backpack, again, inspired by some of uh, Mylar Melody's miniature system recommendations. Um, originally, I actually had the DUP for A1116 in here instead of Platts. Um, so it was entirely analog. Um, I didn't actually have the IntelliGel Flurry at the time either, which is Flurry is a really great feature packed module that for something this size where you just want to be able to pick it up and go and jam or do whatever. It's great because it's got sample and hold. It's got SLU, which you can sort of use as an envelope follower. Um, it's got white and pink noises that you can run through a filter to do whatever you want to do with filtered noise plus it's got that really awesome bank of digital noise which and you could run that into rings uh, to excite it or you can just use it sort of as interesting atonal sounds um, i've had a lot of fun using um, it does touch tone phone signals and those are surprisingly musical if you run them through a little bit of reverb or some delay you can make really interesting sort of chip tune sounds using touch tone phone dial tone sounds or not just dial tone but you know touch tone phone button sounds um it also does there's radio sweep noises which featured one of the songs in the background earlier in this video um I, i'm a ham radio operator I, I don't do it regularly but i've had my license for a really long time 
So having the the HF radio sweeps um, that brings me joy. So it is for the size of the module. It is really really feature packed and. Honestly, if you're building a case of any size and just looking for noise options, I um, highly recommend it. I, if I had a second one, I'd probably be trying to figure out how to fit it in this big case because it is it is a lot of fun and it, it does have just so many features. Okay, that is that all screwed together. Um, 14, the, the power supply for this, uh, because I just brought it back from vacation it's on the floor behind me and not plugged in so i'm not gonna turn this case on just yet but i think we've got everything put together the way we wanted to um, turn both of these on make sure they all light up the way they're supposed to so many lights so many blinkies honestly i think the prize for best lights has to go to vpme.de's euclidean circles uh, that is a a fantastically pretty module and the only thing I wish it had was a toggle button for ratchets um, because you if you want to do like a, a drum fill or a, a ratchet depending how quickly you're clocking the thing you can crank the knob clockwise to increase the number of rhythms or the number of on beats and then when you're done you go back but unless you've got the muscle memory and the practice you always undershoot or overshoot and then you, you miss a beat or have an extra one it doesn't sound nearly as clean as if you just had a momentary button that would fill everything on so you can do a, a quick drum fill or something that, that's one of the things i really like about the ll8 too is you've got a hold to automatically toggle or a hold to enable every clock step to output on a channel so you can do drum fills and that sort of thing really easily with this if Euclidean Circles had that, absolutely it would be down here instead of LLA2. Um, as it is, it sort of lives in my extra utility case up there because I sometimes want to use it, sometimes I don't. Um, it is a lot of fun to play with, but it just it's missing that one feature. Anyway, I think this video has probably gone on longer than I had originally intended it to, um, but mission successful. We've rebuilt this case. We've dropped in a couple of new modules i'm really excited to play around with radio music with rings and clouds i think that's going to be a lot of fun um yeah thank you very much for anyone who happens to watch this and i'll see about doing some more live streams where i'm actually playing music instead of talking about making music and building a machine that'll eventually let me play music thanks a lot have a good day